I have a quick story I'd like to tell you. Oh, that's tremendous. You made me laugh. You know one of my favorite things of the week is? When I tell you a story. One, seeing you. Oh. I was at the party and somebody said, hey, do you want to come to the after thing? I was like, no, I got to go. I got to yeah. go see a friend. Thanks, pal. And he said, never speak to me again. No, <laughs> you just, lost you lost one friend. but I have no friends now at work, but... Stop. The second thing is um, hearing your stories. I always enjoy hearing your stories. I guess okay. those are related. Okay. It's, not, it's like one B. You, you would think that B would just be the reason for... Yeah, I mean, but, but you're, the weeks where you bring nothing, I still like seeing you. When oh, you just okay. show up and you got no Why shit. I never do that. Yeah, no stories. You're like, I didn't I might prepare. Say that I, didn't, I might say that I didn't prepare anything, but I've always got tons of stuff. Oh, I see. I like to underplay my... Uh, hey, I'm cool. I didn't prepare. What am I supposed to prepare for this thing? You're wearing like a leather jacket. You're like, what do I prepare? What am I, I a like guy? Set to the class. I'm like a repair guy. Come on. Not me. What are you a nerd? Let me go get on my skateboard and go down the hall. Uh, see my buddies in the bathroom and smoke some cigarettes. Remember when skateboards were edgy? Um, I, I remember seventh grade, edgy. like the skateboards. They had that hair that like came mm, across your face. Yeah. Now that middle-aged women have that haircut, <laughs> I don't. I don't understand why that happened. <laughs> oh, that is tremendous that the skateboard cut transitioned to middle-aged women. Do you think so, that's a thing? Like, whatever sca haircut well, skateboarders have now, well, middle-aged women will have in, like, 20 well, now, years? now, I saw a kid just the other day that had Edith Bunker's haircut. I think it goes, I think the trends go back and forth. Wow, it loops on itself? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they were, it was like edge, like, you didn't really know where they were coming from. You're like, wow, that guy's mysterious. They all had cool nicknames. Well, I knew a kid named, his name is Nate, but he only went by Nay. Doesn't save you any syllables. Mm. Story. All right, so tonight oh, I went out. Oh, your story, yes. I went out. Paddle paddle I'm sure you went paddle boarding. I did. With all that my is friends. like every, I've been listening to the last weeks. Every it's all week I do. Is, <laughs> but this isn't real. What did you have? I, I went paddle boarding. But this isn't really and I paddle my pants boarding. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm really cool. I tell a story about Padovardi and involves me <laughs> my pants. I bring stuff to this show. So I went out tonight and I saw, so right when I got in the water, there were, there was a guy standing there looking at something and, a pad, and I went over to him and he had, there were three manatees right around him. Oh, cool. So we talked for a minute, paddled away. I paddle north and I run into, there's maybe 200 feet away. There's a group of four people, three men that I would say were Maybe five years older than us, like I'd say early fifties. One okay. of them, one of them's holding like an adult-looking special needs kid. The kid was like um, baby Bjorning him. He was kind of oh, like, wow, you know. That's but he was like great. probably a twenty-year-old kid. Three. So what it looked like to me was three buddies and one brought his kid. They're just having a couple of beers in like waist-high water, taking in the. It was starting maybe to rain. taking a shit if night. they had to go. If you got to go, it's right there. You're, you don't even have to move. <laughs> yeah, you're already in. So I'm like, I, so I had just seen three manatees. I see a kid with special needs. He's with his dad. I'm like, oh, I'll tell them. They'll be excited. I'll be the hero. So I get up there. It takes me. They're watching. You know, it takes like, like you just said, it would be funny to see a cop chase me because yes, it takes 10 minutes to get, slow, yeah. <laughs> to get 200 feet. So I get up there and I'm like, hey, if you guys want, if you walk back, like maybe 200 feet over there, there's three manatee you could, uh, you could check out. <laughs> and the guy goes, so if I stay here. How many? <laughs> something like he says. Wait, how did he say it? It made me laugh. God damn it! Um, he said, "So if I stay here, how many do you think I'll see?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that story sucked. I can't remember. I could, right when I was trying to think of the the punchline, it it fell apart. Basically, so in, in, insinuating he wasn't going to leave the spot he was in to go see mm. three manatee. He just wanted to stay where he was and drink his beer, and all of his friends laughed, and. Uh, it was funny enough that I actually fell off my board when he said it, and then I couldn't even remember the goddamn punchline. You just laughed so hard. Yeah, he just had this New York accent. So how many do you think I'll see if I stay here? And I just, I just doubled over. I mean, oh, and it was the guy that was holding the crippled kid. Like you serious? Kid. Like you're not just joking right now? No. You seriously fell off? Yeah, I, I fell backwards. <laughs> I laughed so hard that I fell backwards off my board. Wow, that's a great reaction you had. Cause he was kind of being a dick to you and that was just a great reaction. oh it's so funny yeah it was i he was totally being a dick and it was hilarious and i fell in the water and made it like probably funnier for them and then were you like drowning a little bit and they were still <laughs> laughing a shark, at you? A shark bit my foot 
I had to go to the hospital. I couldn't. I'm surprised I even made You're it. You're just laughing at you still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In blood-soaked waters. Go back to your manatee friends. <laughs> um. Well, that's fun. Yeah. So that's how my evening started. Friday night in the mag room. All around the world you can hear them. Hey, hey, hey. Talking about using kind of funny stuff. Hey, hey, hey. Mag room. Mag room. The mag room. The mag room. Yeah, I'm almost done with school. Yeah, I thought you were. I, I actually well, the been kids sort left. Of, I've been cyber stalking you. I um, I tried to look up like when you would be out of class when. Gra- yeah. So you had graduation before the last show, right? Yeah, and then kids left. Okay. Wednesday, and then I've been doing the grades and stuff. So my, I still have stuff to do Monday, but that's it, and I'm done. Then I start preparing for the visit of Mark Einloff. Oh, I thought you were gonna say your move. The move is first, but I was ranking them in order of importance. When are you? When are you moving? moving? July fourteenth. Okay, and I'll be there a week later. Is that when you were coming? Twenty first. Right. You can hang some pictures with us. I'll do some housework. And you and Aaron are coming to play golf. I, that's. I think so. That's yeah. The, that's the plan. You gonna stay at my house at all? I mean, <clears> Aaron can if he comes play golf. He could just stay too. We could have a yeah. That night, have a little party, play some Slumber golf party. Play and hang out make in the prank backyard. Calls? Did you got? Did you used to make prank calls at slumber party? Or see, I guess well, girls had slumber parties. Oh, we had sleepovers. We just called it a sleepover. Prank uh, prank calls were a big part of sleepover culture in Connecticut. In the yeah, 80s. you can't Ooh. do those anymore. Joe Anderson, remember your question about what do we like from the '80s? Sleepover parties where we prank called people and recorded. And that's an uh, '80s thing because you cannot do prank calls anymore. Mm-hmm. One, nobody answers their phone. Oh, right, yeah. And two, there's all these ways to trace whoever calls you. But the prank calls, Ken uh, Sansone, they had a prank call. They made tapes. But you want to yeah, know how different the world is now? So he did them at Duke. They made some tapes. Their senior year, they asked Duke if they could have, because there was like work, you remember work study? Like you'd go to college, but they'd pay you some money to do a job. Mm-hmm. So Duke paid a kid to be their assistant like their research for the guy. prank calls. Yeah, that's awesome. Right now, the college would like probably expel you. Could they get us one of those? That would be awesome. We should look into that. Is there a local college where you are? To do uh, an internship with us? Yeah. That would be nice. But you like doing the producing, so I don't know. What would they do? Our social he'll, media? He'll do this part of it. <laughs> he'll he'll be, be that person with me? He'll, he'll be me. Yeah, Mark. Will he pretend to be you? Yeah, I'll tell him all my stories so he knows. Hey, Jared, I was paddleboarding this Friday. And it's not my voice. I just went and, you know, kind of paddleboarded around this corner and it was crazy. Yeah? Then there it was sounds like, like a good story. Something that I'd like be some, engaged in if I were listening the to The water's it. got a little rough, but I handled it. And then I saw this guy. Oh, because you've got really good balance because you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Then he was peeing in the water and it was awesome. Well, at least he wasn't pooping. <laughs> no. <laughs> like you did. Yeah, it was great. Then I pet a manatee. It was awesome. All right. So we got Emma's here for Fabulous Flying Facts with Emma. This has been amazing. I've really enjoyed your stories. We've gotten a few emails about how wonderful you're. And you had a guest from the, for the bird sound from last week, didn't you? Oh, I thought it was a cardinal. Wrong. <laughs> oh, what was it? It was a uh, <laughs> sparrow. That's not a kind of sparrow. Vaulted sparrow. The actual <laughs> what was it? Here, though? talk over here. Talk. What was it, though, actually? It was a cardinal. You got it, nerd. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so do you have, I have a bird story, actually, as well. But do you have a bird minute? Please don't touch the cord. Sure. I have one. I'm going to do hummingbird. Hummingbird. Ruby throated hummingbird. Fun. Is that I the one to... from Connecticut? Yeah. Have... There's only you... one. There's would only you believe one. that? Would you believe me if I told you that I have two hummingbird feeders about 80 feet away from me right now? Uh, what hummingbirds I, come I, there? I would you believe that? Um, someone gave me a humming. Well, she gave me one, and then for some reason she gave me two. Where are they? In my store. I just haven't brought them home yet. 
should send yeah, it the back hummingbirds aren't store. gonna come in your store. You also, make your own nectar for it too. Like sugar water. Don't you just yeah. use sugar water? And then you can also um so interesting facts about them. They What hummingbirds are in Florida, Emma? I don't know. Interesting. I can go find out if you want. You should just tell your story. I thought maybe you'd know, though. A hummingbird is the smallest <laughs> bird in uh, the world. It's a bee hummingbird. It's very small. It's a small bird. It's Mark going to play this sound while you're doing this. So this is what you do. You just get a book about hummingbirds and then tell yeah, them. Yeah, I could do this. Lines I could from the read book. book and be like, Excuse me. I'm the PhD in hummingbirds. Oh, I work at the Audubon Society. I, uh, Excuse I me. You want to know something about hummingbirds? I got my book. Yeah, I know everything about them. Hold on one second. Hummingbirds I just have to go to the bathroom for a minute. I'll be right back. Are you still looking up hummingbirds? Do you want me to look them up? I can just type yeah, it. I'm gonna find the ones that are. It's under H. It's under H. I don't know. No, I was gonna stop. Not touch my TV. No, no, I found the page. Bag of let me do it. Is... Daddy, let me do it. Don't Google Please it. Please don't go on the court. No, okay, let me do it though. I have it now. Okay, go ahead. The name of your segment should what? be Don't Go On The Cord. Dad, I asked you <laughs> so I can do it. Holy smokes, there's like nine of them in Florida. Tell us all about it. You just there's more, nine more, Dad. It's like, I know as much as your daughter. Let me just, all I need is a little 18 hummingbirds in Florida. Tell us what they are, Emma. Another fact about them is that they move their wings in a figure eight motion. Oh, that's cool. They like brighter colors. They like red and purple flowers. And they're very territorial. They'll fight over bird, at bird feeders. Do you know anything about their wings, the way they're, whether the, the force of their wings, the up and the down force of their wings? Uh, they do it in a figure eight motion, like I said. So it's easier to move them because they have to. What does that allow them to do? What does that, what does well, that just motion? Just think about it. If you move your arms like up and down, it takes a lot more energy than if you're just moving them in like a... What are the hummingbirds? I always dance with a figure. What gets accomplished by that motion? I'm asking you a, I'm asking you a question that I'm wondering if you know the answer to, because I know something about hummingbirds that maybe you don't know. They're the only birds that their upstroke and their downstroke both propel them. I see. The hummingbirds, most birds, when they flap down is when they get their propulsion, but hummingbirds on their up and their down stroke can move themselves. Interesting. Do you want to tell... That's why they can, that's why they can hum, stay in place. Do you want to tell Mark how many hummingbirds are in Connecticut? One. One. What's his name? There's only one, and it's known as the ruby-throated hummingbird. That's the one Connecticut Ruby has? Ruby-throated yeah. sparrow. Sing my song. Yeah, you should definitely Don't put up long. that thing. Me to the what? Your hummingbird feeder. You get a lot of different ones. I want to get an owl, uh, whatever you call it, house. Is there a lot of owls in Florida? When I bought my house, the first day I bought my house, I, oh man, should I tell, oh, I can't tell the story with your kids there. Uh, I, all right, so long story short, I went to my house and, um, I wish I could tell the story. Um, Just tell it, Mark. No, I I'm not. It. I'm not telling it to you. Uh, I, I don't care. I know you don't care, but I do. And Jared might. Dad, so, do you a, care if Mark tells me a story? Yes. yes. If, he, if he's filtering it, then yes. An owl uh, was uh, living on my, it was not living, but it was perched on the, I have a, an exterior light on the outside of my front door and he was perched on top of it. And I walked out of my house and my dad was standing in the driveway and I looked at him and I go. You walked the owl out of I, your house? I, I, I stepped out my front door onto my okay. step. I was facing my father who was 20 feet away from me staring at me. And as I was staring at him, I could feel something looking at me right here. And I said, is there an owl right next to me? And my dad goes, yeah. And I looked and he took off and I've never seen him again in my yard since. But I hear owls in my, na my neighborhood all the time. How, did, how could that even they're be? they're barred owls. Or they could be screech owls too. I don't really know by sound. So you scared him away and he never returned? Never came back. I bought his house and I, uh, yeah. All right, I got a, I got a story for you, Emma. If you don't have anything else. So that was your hummingbird presentation? Jared yeah, did most it. of the talking. She got mad when I brought up the Florida thing and that was it. <laughs> what happened? She's not on camera, so I can't, I don't she know She got angry on. that I brought up that there were Florida ones. Because that stole, that stole the thunder of your one. No, it's not. You have one hummingbird in Connecticut. You're just not. <laughs> this is a murder case. Do you want to solve a murder case? Albert or Sparrow? 
A nest was assaulted. Was it the cowbird or the sparrow? It was just a nest. All right, here's the story. This was from the New York Times. Cowbird was. I open the pantry door and the eastern Phoebe flies off the nest. Okay. Her cup-shaped home is made of mud, covered in moss, and cantilevered over a glass light fixture and avian falling water. Her nest placement makes sense. Before Eastern Phoebes lived so close to humans, they built their nests on cliffs. Every year for 35 years, we've had an Eastern Phoebe nest under the eaves of our back porch. Without her, it would not be spring. Now you play the bird sound right there. <coughs> Eastern Phoebes have the distinction of being the first bird ever banded. Remember mm -hmm. last week, last time we brought up yeah. some banding. I thought that was cool. John James Audubon did it. In 19, 1804 a by John James Audubon himself. There, I have a picture. J.J. Audubon himself? He, he saw them in a cave and then he decided to tie a little, a little string around the um, butt of the younger. He younger wrestled ones. them to the ground and Sounds tied them. He waited until he waited till the parents left and then he tied around the younger ones. Because the there were all there. these weird, there were all these weird theories about what the birds did when they left like some a lot of people thought that they went under the ocean or they just what? flew to them people thought that they went in how is that conspiracy the theory not survive some people say that they went under the ocean and got in big clumps and that fishers would catch like, like crazy clumps of birds and then people also say no these were like genuine birds go under the ocean what? Well, these are genuine scientific <laughs> theories at the time. Sure and they then, were. Come on. No, actually, and they people people thought that they flew to the moon and back. What? Yeah, genuinely, they thought they like migrated to the moon and then. That should be still on the internet. Somewhere. What century was this? Um, eighteen oh four. Nobody, I will, I defy you to find me somebody in eighteen oh four that thought that the birds went under the ocean. There's no way. R, matey, I see the birds under the ocean. Oh, she's running. She's <laughs> running away. Wait, the moon one is even worse. Yeah, they flew to the moon. I don't you think know. the I ocean? Th is... I think that's. I think moon is more. You think? Genuine scientific. Oh, theory, Emma huh? brought another book. She brought an odd book. If you ask any bird question, she'll come out with a different book. I was just kidding. I believe everything you said. Okay. So here, let me just read what John Audubon did first. Can I first say? Yeah, One autumn day, he bird. tied silver threads onto the legs of five nestlings before they migrated south. And later that day, he saw them fly under the ocean, never to be seen. <laughs> so the question was, where do small birds go in winter? So the, the Greek philosopher, artist... Aristotle had like he decided that big birds um, migrated, oh, but small it. birds either hibernated underwater or in hollow logs all winter. And a fisherman said there was tangled birds in my net just last week. Mm. And then people thought that they transformed themselves from one bird to another, or they went. So you're considering a fisherman from ancient Greece a scientific Ars theory? Hey, Billy okay. Aristotle, I caught some birds in my net last week. Plato, you won't believe what I found in the... Uh... Aristotle said it. He's a philosopher. Mm. And then scientists of the day still agreed with Aristotle. Ha, ha, ha. Aristotle? Whatever. Oh, artist. I thought you said Aristotle. If it was Aristotle, that guy, he was a known... He was the town drunk. He was the Athens Mom, village fool. Okay, you know what? They said that they got a football, about clinging beak to beak, wing to wing, and foot to foot. And they would lay underwater all winter. This why is why nobody believes science. And then people oh, said, Artistall. Artistall has been hitting whiskey John, again. He's making up stories about fish flying through the air. And they thought the people, I'll tell you what, the fish are even in this bush or they're underwater. God damn it, Artistall. We're going to have to throw you in the drunk <laughs> tank they, again. They travel to the moon. You and your scientific theories. You were claiming that I was stupid for saying it was scientists, and so I was proving to you that no, scientists. Stupid. I don't think I said stupid. But you were you were making Crazy. fun of me for saying fine. You're making fun of me for Insane. saying scientists. That's funny. And but genuinely, I proved to you that scientists, philosophers, people who like you said Aristotle, big, he wasn't big, a scientist. Johnny Aristotle, who were big names at the time. Wow, you're like, <laughs> I will scream over Name you dropper. if I have to. Yeah, that's how it works for you. Daddy. This is not hey. a right. You know, literally Florida scream over me all the time. Free. All right, can we talk more about our murder story? How am I supposed to do a bird minute? It's like if you don't. You already better. finished. I don't even get a minute to talk. You had it, but it was over. not really. No, you. But this year, constantly. Kind of wasted. Defending some 
Greek drunk. One day uh, last spring when I went to check on ramblings, I found three raw and naked Eastern Phoebe nestlings tossed onto the porch floor. That makes sense. First, I suspected brown-headed cowbirds. No, see, because here's... Famous as they are for raiding necks, nests. No, they see, they wouldn't have done that because, well, brown-headed cowbirds will lay their eggs in other birds' nests and just let them take care of it. That's yeah. exactly what the next sentence said. Nice job, him. Was it that long? No, it was shorter, but... Okay. They, the guy, Robert Mulvihill, said he didn't blame the house sparrows. Oh, my God. He said they're looking... Said the the wild bird should not be labeled the bad guy just for doing what it naturally does to survive. He said Eastern Phoebes need to regroup and find safer nesting sites. So he blamed this. He blamed the, the Phoebe. A blamer. Yes, but they shouldn't. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. Let's, said, let's be honest. They're not supposed to be if here. If bluebirds and Eastern Phoebes have an enemy. It is we humans, not the house sparrows that we borrowed here. Okay, that's probably true. Friend, how can so you- then he recommended that we kill all the humans. Okay. This was a story from the New York Times. So have you ever have you ever had arguments with your neighbors about things? Uh, not really. I get along with most of my neighbors. I'm trying to think. Like something no. that you like left in your yard, or they didn't mow their lawn, or no. Nah. All right. What if your neighbor? This was in Georgetown, and one of the guys put up two humongous statues of Bumblebee and Optimus Prime from Transformers in his front stoop. I'd be totally fine with that. That's cool. They were $25,000 each. And they bring up the property value right there. You got it. And he put him, he took out his planters. You know, usually those Georgetown apartments, they have the like planters in the front. He took them out and put in the two large transformers. So you'd be cool with that? Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, his neighbors were not excited about it. What did they do? They sued him. You know, you bring it to like the local neighborhood board. And then at first the neighborhood board said he had six months to do it. This guy, so this guy is loaded. He paid three, four million dollars for this townhouse. Then he bought the one next door for four point five million. He would park his cars out front. One was a McLaren 720s. One was a Porsche. Well, usually, guys that own McLarens are such cool people. Two Porsches, an MRAP truck. I don't know what that is. Manufacturer's rebate after purchase. <laughs> so it's just like a dinky old pickup truck, truck that he got as yeah, as a, a set and a vehicle. small airplane. So he parked an airplane in front of his house. Yeah, he sounds like a cool guy. So the people didn't like this. They brought him to court. So he argued that the statues constitute meaningful public art. Transformers movies follow a classic good versus evil struggle, in which the Autobots, the good guys. Battle Orpheus. to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. The bad guy. Transformers. More than meets the eye. Does he play that song out of his front porch all the time? Blasting it through the speaker. Yeah. So he lost, this guy lost the case. Um, Dr. Howard, so the Dr. Howard guy didn't get a permit. Uh, it said it wasn't a question of art. It's a question of following the rules. Well, he argued that people fill their sidewalk planners with stuff and don't get dinged for it. But he was getting dinged because he filled his planters with transformer statues. Mm. That was his argument. Uh, Valid argument. So he would have put, but he said, this is what he said. I'm sad, he said in a text to a reporter. What do you think I should do? He asked the reporter what he what the reporter yeah. the guy should do? Yeah. Hmm. And he wrote, I know what these transformers mean to me. What does it mean to them? What if it's really, if he's just being an a or if he really does have yeah, some he's just real sad sentimental about attachment to Transformers? To be honest, I don't know. I don't feel like I have the right to, if I, I, it wouldn't, it would make me, I don't know. It would annoy me after a while, I guess, probably, but I don't think I'd be the type of person that tried to get you to take it down. Well, it's tough. I think it's tough if you'd like, so put yourself in that you bought an apartment for like four million dollars and then the guy next door to you puts two huge transformer statues on his front step life we were just talking about this it's life there's sometimes just 
You don't yeah. get to choose everything. You don't get to have a happy life. You're not entitled to just always being happy in life. That doesn't come with it. So sometimes you have to put up with bullshit. And if that happens to be a bad neighbor who puts up a transformer statue, then you might have to sell it. If it's going to bother you so much that it, but let things roll off your back. I don't know. Yeah, it's a Fine. good way. To, it's a good mantra. Probably part of the reason he did it was because he knows that and he wanted to bother his neighbors because yeah. he has a bunch of money. F you money, you know? It's like, I don't know. Uh, I kind of. $25,000 Transformers I'm kind of, statues. I'm kind of on his side, I think. So I, I bought the place. It's my property. I want to do with it what it's, yeah. you know, I own it. But if you bought it in an HOA place or something like that, then I would just think that they'd. Well, that's what happened. Filing. They told him to stop and he didn't do it. Yeah. So what do you do then? You steal the Transformer statues? I don't know. Because what if you're in an HOA and they tell you to do it, but you don't do it? Like, what do they do then? It eventually ends up in court, put liens on your property. But what if you have like $20 million? Like, what the hell are they going to do? What does it mean to put a lien on your property? Well, they just put on record, on the county records, you're... you're your property, the fact that Jared Sisk owns one Maple Avenue in Norwalk, Connecticut, is on a public record that's kept in the system. Okay, of, great. Uh, property appraisers. I like, I own some property. So, when, so I put up some Transformer statues. But you put all these Transformer statues up, and now your HOA is pissed at you. So they file, great. they keep filing liens, injunctions, whatever it's called. It's going to be called a lien. And on the county record, it'll ha say that you have, it'll say um, HO. Uh, um, what, what's the name of the complex that you bought? Where did you buy your uh, Wildwood Gardens? Einloth Gardens. Einloth Gar you, uh, Gardens HOA has yeah, filed all these liens. Dick. Each, uh, each, each month they've been filing a thousand dollar lien against your property. And, uh, oh, because they're fining you. Yeah, it's basically a fine that now when you go to sell your house or for you were to refine it. What if I just house, pay the fine? I guess they'll, they'll, I don't know, that's what well, it's vigilante justice. So your neighbors are going to maybe like kill you or something, I guess. But no. <laughs> is, that in, I mean, <laughs> is that in the HOA paperwork? It's, uh, I think that's one of the bylaws. Yeah, one of the bylaws is very far down in the contract. I didn't tell you about my reunion. It was fun. It was weird. The, din the dinner was fun. Um, people showed up. It was good. We got yelled at, or I didn't. The other half of the table, they were being loud, loud and they were swearing. And then people came in. Oh, and, so it's exactly what you didn't want to happen. <laughs> yeah, and then, but it wasn't like that inappropriate. They were just saying like f bombs. And then one of the wives was like, "We're not being loud. Nobody left. You need to leave this." She like yelled at the waiter, and the guy oh, split wow. away. Yeah, it was great. Oh, so that's awesome because that's exactly what you were like kind of worried about yeah. happening like, so we paid and then we went learned how to be adults in public we went to the reunion uh yeah she was she was from new jersey i think that explained it oh she wasn't even one of your friends no i mean why? like one of the your wives of the friends not even one of the people involved in the reunion okay no wow the reunion was weird that's... so 30 years right that's a long yeah. time like i'm yeah. old I think I look somewhat similar to what I did in high school, but they um, didn't have any name tags. I kind of like that. But it was really hard. Yeah, I think that's more fun, though. Did you? A lot of people came up and was like, we would talk. I knew about a third of the people there from sight. They were like, I, everybody was like, I only know about a third of the people. Everybody just kept saying it. We'd talk to somebody and they'd leave and my buddy Tim would be like, who the fuck were you just talking to? So you didn't even ask? You said you wouldn't say like, I... I'm well, they'd come up to you and they'd be like, Jared, how are you? It was weird to be, you can't after that be, say like, who are you? Oh, I would totally do that. Yeah. Really? If they went in? Absolutely. Into you? I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. What's, uh... Oh. You're Plus, better, I like... You're I smarter like, than me. No, I just like awkward... I like awkwardness. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's a good thing that you like. But it was fun. That's, we stayed a little while and then went home. I'm glad that exactly what you didn't want to happen happened. That... Yeah, and the guy I was worried about didn't even show up. Let's see. It was overall anybody, anybody fun. get anybody get not of your of your group or maybe your group, but did anybody? I love like stories where someone gets too drunk or two people hooked up and they got caught. I don't know about anybody, hooked up. I think there was like puked. we left at like ten. Anybody doing drugs? Did you see people using drugs? There was no did drugs that I saw. Okay. We left at like ten, and there were some pictures people sent at like midnight that people looked pretty drunk. I didn't. 
We had like an hour ride back, so. What kind of place was it at? Uh, just a like a was it? It was like a school? golf club. No, a golf oh, okay. club. Okay. They had food, but we ate dinner, so we didn't. I mean, we paid forty bucks a person. And I probably had like one hors d'oeuvre, so that's what I paid. Yeah. Did they play music from the nineties? No, it was no music. Oh. They had a few things out that were like mementos, like a yearbook, and they didn't have a a, a DJ. No, I don't really know what. I don't know what the money school. went for, really. You guys dropped the ball. Well, really, you could have just... These days, you could have a speaker and an iPod and just play yeah. like 90s, 80s, or 90s yeah. It would have taken one person to one of the yeah. planning committee to bring a speaker. Well, I, I harped on the name tags for a little while, so I think I was already in the house. I think that... I kind of like that you didn't know half the people. All right, so girls that you had crushes on did they all look worse than how you remember them or did any hold them? everybody looked wicked fucking old <laughs> and more heavy than they did that's normal i guess that's fun i like Which later drink? i'm like i was like do i look like this so you didn't get did you get drunk at all or just like three no nah, i had a, I had two beer i dread to drive home i had two beers and a coke yeah yep. but the other people like when i left one of the guys was like, we're doing shots. And he handed me a <laughs> shot, and I was like, I got to go. They, I mean, and that was like the third shot they had done. So I think that group got pretty. I had a Christmas get-together like that uh, 15 years ago or something. In Connecticut? Yeah. I remember. I think you. that was when I was at Gunnery. I think I remember that. You called me to come. Yeah. But it was like that night. Yeah. Like, I'm in Connecticut. You should come to Cheshire. Yeah. And I was like, it's, it, dude, it's like eight o'clock on a Saturday. Like, what do you? That's how I roll. Yeah. But you could then say you invited me, but. Yeah. Cover my bases. Get on with my life. Have fun. Yeah. Not worry about it. That was, I didn't come. I want to say that. I think it was like almost exactly 15 years ago. It was like 08 or 09. That sounds right to me. Oh, yeah. Because I had gotten, I mean, my ex split up in 07. So it was either 08 or 09 because. Something so you on, threw a party? Happened on, something happened on that trip that I couldn't have done if I had a, oh, a wife. baby. A wife in you a car. In a car. You ate a car in a car. In a car. In a car in a parking lot. Now that I think about it. What? Yeah. Like mall, some girl mall, you knew. A mall parking lot. Yeah, a girl that I had a that I had a crush on in like seventh grade or something. Oh wow. It was just a like a, it was when Facebook when first I got on Facebook. It was a uh How did you not stay on Facebook after that for all Oh my god, it's so awful. But it did all that good for you. That the the fun the fun part happened within the first three months of it. As soon as you get on you meet see all these people and stuff and it happened to be around Christmas time and I was going home. So mm-hmm. a bunch of people decided to get together and um you know, we got like twenty people from our That's fun. Yeah, it was a fun night. Produced by. Are we going into the end? I don't know. Are we ready? Should I, do I do my thing I'd always do? Should I wrap it up? Should we wrap it up? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I don't even know who to produce it by. Uh, do we, ha- do we have any people today? Arsatol. Arsatol. What was it? <laughs> produced by mispro- Bill Ars- Aristotle. How did she mispronounce Aristotle? I don't know. And she got mad. <laughs> Like um, theme song by Maggie Ellox. Thank you for Emma for being on again with your fabulous furry friend bird, bird stories. Email or write us a letter. You can read about it in the description if you really want to do that. Don't yeah, look, do don't look at social media. We hate social media. Put your phone down. Don't murder week. your wife. And don't week. don't murder your wife again. We have a or street. next week. Right. Couple couple week streak. Nobody's murdered their wife that listens to the show. Hope that never happens, because we'll be suspect somehow. And yeah, it's probably true. I started. Um, I had my first phone call with the therapist woman this week. Thought you weren't going to be able to do it till November or something. Yeah, now it's on. Okay. So they send you all this. I got. I'm going to meet with her in a couple of weeks, but they send you all this paperwork stuff. And one of them is this release form, and it says, if I see you in public, I will not acknowledge you. If you say hello to me, I will say hello back, but that is it. 
And then that is like, we will move on because this is a professional relationship. So I, want, I need a, can I have that? I want to make 500 copies of that disclaimer for myself. If I see you in public, I will nod at you. I'll say hi. So you could have like a contract for your, like, cause this is a professional. Cause so anyone who comes in your store. Or just anybody at all. You're like, I, want it, I want it to be anybody at all. Anybody? Yeah, it would be great. No, you know, I can't talk about your washing machine. I signed the thing. I can Remember, we I sold you stamps at the store. We can't. Yeah, you signed that non-disclosure form. This is a professional agreement. <laughs> you say hello, I'll say hello back. I hope you see her in public all the time. Imagine after that, I'm just like seeing her everywhere. We sit next to each other at like fireworks and... Just nodding at each other. The there's whole. nothing we can say. <laughs> It's like the what's what the, if you what? got trapped? What if you got trapped? You're trapped in an elevator? elevator? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like I'm not allowed to speak to you. I um I think one of us should probably try to fix the elevator or call the police or something. Please, please stop speaking to me. We're only allowed to say hello. You can only nod at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll see. She's. I mean, it's all business. It seems like we'll see how yeah. it goes. We won't do that on this show, right? We would what's acknowledge that? you. I mean, Me and you? You, I know you don't want to acknowledge anybody, but if anyone from the show saw us, we would love to talk to them. I'd nod at them, sure. Because? Nod at the mag room. <laughs> and we'll say hi back. And everything else is cream cheese. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, ooh my groom is good. My groom is good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, ooh my groom is good. My groom is good. The my groom's good. Ooh, ooh, I like my groom. I like my groom. Ooh, ooh, my groom is good. My groom is good. Hey, this is Emma, everybody.